All right, what's happening, Real Filmers? I'm here at C2E2, otherwise known as the Chicago Entertainment Expo. I have here with me the author of the New York best-selling graphic novel, The Fifth Beetle, Vivek Tawari. How you doing? Hey, good, man. Really nice to see you. All right. Well, first off, uh, how, how has the experience been thus far here at C2E2? Is, is this your first year? It's not. I was here last year, and okay. it's uh, it's been awesome. You know, I was here last year talking about the book, generating excitement for it. It wasn't out yet mm. last year, so it was a lot of talk, okay. you know, uh, but the book came out in November, so it's awesome to be back now with the book out and having it having done so well and being able to kind of celebrate with uh, with my people you know these are this is my family here okay, so there you go it's been awesome. uh, well, well I read a little bit you know about the whole process of getting the book together and uh, I understand that it came together because of your interest in doing uh, uh, music management, correct? That's right. Okay, so can you talk a bit about that genesis with, with sure. the novel? Sure, yeah. So I'm a lifelong Beatles fan, and when I was in business school dreaming about working in the entertainment industry and managing bands, I thought that uh, if I'm going to do this, being a little geeky, a little academic, I thought I should study the lives of the great artist managers, the great entertainment visionaries, and that led me to a study of Brian Epstein. I felt that Brian and the Beatles kind of wrote that rule book. Uh, so I was initially interested in the business uh, stories. You know, how did he get the Beatles a record deal when everybody turned them down? How did he convince Ed Sullivan to book them when a British band had never made an impact in the United States? How did he come up with the suits and the haircuts and package and present them in that way? Those are the stories I was after. And they're wonderful stories. They're very inspiring. If you're a Beatles fan, they're a particular treat, and they're all in the book. Um, but I'll be honest, it was the human side of his story that I wasn't looking for. I wasn't chasing. I didn't know anything about it. And when I uncovered the, that story, that's what really struck a deep chord for me. He was gay at a time where it was literally against the law to be gay. He was Jewish at a time of pervasive anti-Semitism. And he was from Liverpool. And prior to the Beatles, Liverpool was a town that had no cultural influence. So you've got this gay Jewish man running around Liverpool saying, I found a local band. They're going to be bigger than Elvis. They're going to elevate pop music into an art form. And uh, people thought he was crazy, but he was right. And he chased that dream, and he realized it spectacularly. And I find that incredibly inspiring, you okay. know. Right. As a young person of Indian origin, uh, you know, most people of my background, we don't go into graphic novels and Broadway producing. You know, we go into engineering or technology or medicine, you know. And so, so to see, to have a role model of somebody that... that chased his dreams uh, when everybody told him he was crazy was very inspiring for me. So that, that's why I've really been with this story for so long. Okay, so that actually uh, is a good jumping off point because, you know, after learning a, a bit about Epstein, it, it's very much, you know, an underdog story. And yeah, I remember you were talking right. about uh, things that you took away from his life that, that you wanted to, you know, uh, use as a as a uh, um, uh, example of what yeah. you should do and then yeah. also as an example of what you shouldn't do as sure. well. Yeah, yeah. So it kind of it, it sparked in my mind that uh, fascination that people have with other films of that nature, like maybe like Scarface, where, sure, yeah. you know, there's that underdog story where there's things about the character or the things about the person that you really admire, and then other things where it's kind of like a cautionary tale. So can you, you know, comment on that? Yeah, or why you think you, people you know, fascinate? It's, it's, uh, it's funny because um, t we are adapting it into a film, and uh, technically it's a music-related biopic, mm -hmm. but I always say in film terms, it's far less like Ray or Walk the Line, and it's much more like Billy Elliot or Rocky. You know, it's about the least likely guy to succeed going the distance in their chosen field. You know, and if we do our jobs correctly, you know, much like you don't have to be a fan of boxing to like Rocky, you certainly don't need to be a fan of, of ballet to appreciate Billy Elliot. You shouldn't need to be a Beatles fan to appreciate the Brian Epstein story because at its core, it's an underdog story, you know, and we love underdogs. We're human beings. Everybody can relate to that. No matter how successful you are at some point in your life, you know, everyone knows what it's like to be the underdog. Everyone knows what it's like to have a dream or a desire that they're not quite getting and they're, they're chasing. So I think that's a very universal story. And to, to know that that story is at, is at the heart of the Beatles story, you know, one of the greatest pop culture icons of all time. I find that incredibly inspiring and I think that's why people connect to it so much. And, and we are off to the races with the film. 
Uh, the film is is uh, is very is at a very exciting place. We're casting Brian right now. We have a panel uh, later today at 4:15, and we'll be talking a little bit more about the casting process there. So if you can come by, come by. Um, but we'll be shooting in early next year, in spring of 2015. Uh, we have access to Beatles music, which is very exciting. The band has signed off on the project. They're huge fans. Uh, Paul McCartney, in particular, uh, wrote us a lovely note. He's a big supporter of this. And um, uh, Peyton Reed is directing. He directed uh, Yes Man, The Breakup, and Bring It On. He's amazing. My co-producer is Bruce Cohen, who's also incredible. Uh, Bruce won the Academy Award for producing American Beauty. He was nominated two other times for Milk and Silver Linings Playbook. Mm -hmm. And he produced uh, Big Fish for Tim Burton. So he, we really have an A, t an, a an a team together. Yeah, so yeah. it's uh, it's exciting times. Okay. So so at the panel, um, I understand you said that that we will. Do you have a confirmation that you'll have at the panel? No, about? I will. I will be honest. I, I will tell you right now. We're not announcing Brian at the panel. Okay. Um, but we will talk a little. We'll get. We will give a, a few more details about where we're at with casting. But uh, but I don't want to get your hopes up. We're not announcing Brian okay. at the panel. Okay. Yeah. And uh, last lastly, I know that you're also working on a, a series as well on uh, CBS if I understand can you talk a bit about that project yeah. as well I know that's still in the early stage yeah no so there, there are two other things I'm working on I think what you're referring to is Amelia Rules it's a ch it's a, a series of uh, New York Times best selling series of children's books children's comics that we're adapting for television and film and I'm uh, very, very excited about that. The author, Jimmy Gownley, is somebody that's been a hero of mine. He's a wonderful, wonderful writer. I have two kids myself, a five-year-old and a two-year-old, so I'm very excited about working in kid space. Mm -hmm. uh, and Amelia Rules is about a young girl who, uh, at the beginning of the story, she lives in New York City. She's sort of a, a Manhattan spitfire. Uh, her parents get divorced, and she moves to a small town in the middle of Pennsylvania, and she and her mom move in with her mother's younger sister, who is literally her hot, cool, former rock star aunt. Uh, her aunt was a was a, a huge uh, a music celebrity who disappeared from the public limelight for reasons that get clearer over the course of the series. So Amelia has a new town, new friends, new school. She has to deal with all of those sort of fish out of water scenarios, uh, and her closest confidant is it becomes her aunt, and and that's the story. And it's a series of seven books, and Amelia gets older over the course of the series. Um, so it's it's really a, a wonderful, very heartfelt, very inspiring series for kids. So. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm very proud and honored to be adapting that for, uh, for film and television. And then the other project that I'm working very closely on or very closely with is, uh, is I am producing a uh, Broadway musical adaptation of Alanis Morissette's album, Jagged Little Pill. Mm. Uh, so I'm very proud of that as well. All right. Well, thank you so much, Vivek. And enjoy. Please enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you there so you much. Have it's been a real pleasure filmers. to be with you.